Hello, everyone, and welcome to the most prominent podcast for your New Japan Pro Wrestling G1 Climax 34 content. This is Chris's Chaos at Channel Cortez 33. I am your host, Chris Cortez. And today, on this Saturday, August 17th, 2024, we are covering night 18 of the G1 Climax 34. That is the semi finals held in Rio Goku, Tokyo. Popping crowd tonight. Popping crowd. The card consisted of about eight matches. And those last two matches, those semifinal matches, were bangers. Just under 30 minutes each. We're going to get into it. We're going to get into some serious business. First and foremost, if you haven't done so already, hit that like or subscribe button. For Twitter, Instagram, at Channel Cortez 33. Get on it. Have some fun. Nah, for real. This has been a blast this summer. I've learned a f- few more tricks on this uh, for editing wise. It's been it's been great. Um, the content's coming clearer, looking better, um, and I, I I just I I can't I can't wait for next year for G G one climax thirty five. I'm I'm wondering how what what kind of things I'll I'll be able to do next year. Uh, if you look back at some of my older videos and just look at the evolution of this channel and how far it's come within just like a year and four months, I think it is. Uh, it's, 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 it's taken some major strides. So I'm very, very pleased with the work. Uh, and, and at the end of the G1, I know I'll, I'll, you know, I'll probably take a little bit of a hi- hiatus. Uh, I will cover uh, AEW all in with my buddy, Jonathan at bad guy wrestling shoots and swerves. And I'll also do uh, a, a review of bash in Berlin. It's only, it's only fitting. We're, we're only what, six hours away. So We'll definitely cover that. Um, and as we kind of maybe lean t- closer to the school, uh, my, my school semester, because I will be uh, teaching college classes here in Germany, I will definitely be, be toning down. Um, but we'll be back next, you know, next summer, full, full swing, hard, definitely doing Wrestle Kingdom, obviously, and we'll move on from there. But I'll always keep you posted. You can always catch me at Channel Cortez 33. You know, hit that like or subscribe button. Put some comments in there. Tell me what you think. Tell me who you think is going to win G1 Climax 34 because tomorrow is the finals. And I'll be doing a review of that final match most certainly. So it's been great. Uh, I cannot wait to see what happens. Uh, and we will talk about who you think, who I think is going to win. And I told you, they are pushing their boy, Yoda Suji. Uh, he looked really good today. He looked excellent, um, and it was a perfect matchup between him and David Finley. I think Finley definitely uh, took him to another level. I think Yoda Suji is, is, is evolving. He's, he's getting a, just a little bit better every single time he steps into that ring, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a banger. It's going to be a hell of a match um, tomorrow between Sabre and Suji. Likewise, Sabre versus Shingo Takagi. Right up until the end, you couldn't tell what was going to happen. And sure enough, it ended with a submission for uh, Zack Sabre Jr. It was it was impressive. Uh, but there is a lot to discuss and cover within those two matches alone. Uh, we'll also cover the first six matches. Uh, their tag matches. I'm not going to go into great detail, but I'm going to point out a couple things. You know, it was cool. It was fun. Um, but yeah, we'll check it out. Take a look. Got some notes here. I'll be looking into some stuff. Uh, but the first match. So let's talk about it. the first match. Yoshihashi versus Shou- uh, sorry, Yoshihashi and, and Shomakato versus the Mighty Don't Neils, Robbie Eagles, and Mikey Nichols. Uh, Shomakato looked a little bit stronger today. He's, he's looking better. He took some risks and some of them paid off. Uh, in the end, not so much, but still, he did good. So he's, he's what you call, if you don't know, all right? For, don't worry, the, mar- you know, the, the, the smart marks will be like, oh, I don't need to hear about this. But for some of you that aren't as familiar with New Japan Pro Wrestling, um, he's a recent young lion, you know, just coming out of the academy. He's fresh. And you can always tell this uh, by for any guy who's, who's new by, by their, their, their gear. Uh, they're rocking black boots and black trunks. That's it. Uh, you know, Steve Austin. Don't think Stone Cold Steve Austin, but no knee pads and no real attitude other than a little bit of innocence, child's curiosity. They always look like deer in headlights. 
uh, until they they get a little seasoned, they get a little you know grittier, and you get guys like Red Narita, okay, who's going to bash your head in with a push up bar, or uh, guys like Shota Umino, who's the roughneck, just coming out of different sides of the arena, ready to put on a show. So they remind me of a creative character from Dark Souls. That's the that's the first, that's the best way to put it. Okay, it's like. Bare bones. Okay, now let's dress this guy up. Let's let's make him look the way he needs to look, uh, or any creative wrestler mode you've ever seen in a pro wrestling game. But Dark Souls is way better than any pro wrestling game of recent date. So, yeah, we get Robbie Eagles with the oi 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 chant. I miss that. Uh, we get uh, a lot of you know him being in control until we do get a drop kick from Kate uh, Show Makedo. Yeah. An attack to Hashi. Hashi's always looking good. Did miss him a little, just a little bit in the G1, uh, but he'll he'll be there at some point. Uh, he's looking he's looking a little bit bigger too. Uh, a little bit, a little bit more. You know, weight has been put on him. Uh, he hits those chops like no nobody's business. Uh, but in the end, it was um, it was Robbie Eagles and Mikey Nichols that came on top. I believe it was a pinfall over Sh- uh, Shota. Sh- sorry, Sho Makata. So that was match one. Match two, and that went, what, nine minutes and 28 seconds? Not bad for our first match. The second match went only about seven minutes, 41 seconds. We got Hiroki Goto and Tomoaki Hanma. This is uh, Yoshihashi's tag partner. They're just not tagging together. Uh, with Hanma against the Bullet Club War Dogs, Gabe Kidd and Jake Lee. These guys have developed into a serious tag team. Okay, there were mentions of it by the commentary team about Kidd and Lee going after those IWGP titles. They're, it's going to happen. The tag titles, I can see it. They're perfect together. They're crazy. They're wild. They complement each other. They're different enough from each other. It's happening. Uh, Kid is headbutting. Uh, he, he, when he gets in the ring, Gabe Kid is literally headbutting himself onto the ca- uh, corner pad. It's pretty sweet. He's a madman, and so he says. Uh, and then the end, this ends. I mean, really, a lot of good teamwork between the two, but it ends with a face break shot from Jake Lee to Han, uh, to. Uh, Tomoaki Hama, sick. When that happens, it's over. Uh, third match, Jado El Fantasmo and Shoto Umino versus United Empire's Callum Newman, Jeff Cobb, and T- Konosuke Takeshita. So this was great because, you know, love to see Takeshita throughout this card after what we witnessed between him and Yoda Suji. Chris Charlton, Charlton pointed out uh, how if Tony Khan doesn't utilize Takeshita, he needs to rethink his strategy. Uh, he said nobody said it better. Uh, this guy, if he is not being put in main event matches, if if they don't welcome him back with a you know with a parade, okay. I, and I haven't really been obviously I haven't been keeping up with Dynamite and Rampage. And somebody could tell me in the comment section you know, they've been talking about Takeshi and they've been doing little clips about him from G One. Great, uh, I should be able to see that. Um, I should have seen that many nights ago, many many a couple weeks ago. They should have been pointing out that Takeshi was was getting into the playoffs and he was, he was, you know, well on his way to getting the playoffs and that he was very close to winning um, the sem- the quarterfinal match. So he needs to be uh, really cherished in AEW. Otherwise he's coming to new Japan. Okay. Mark my words. ELP. He was uh, at, throughout uh, the first part of the match. He was isolated. We get some drop kicks, um, hits the drop kick to Newman. Uh, get some space to tag Umino in. He hits the a beautiful fisherman suplex into the bridge for the pin attempt. Uh, stop from Newman, showing off his speed. Tag to Takeshita. Get a leaping lariat by Takeshita. Suplex pin attempt. Get the world class shot to to Jado, and it's over. Pin attempt. Pinfall by Takeshita. Um, there was a little bit of an issue between ELP and Jado, um, like they were miscommunication and. I think that's definitely going to play in a role. We'll talk about that with the next match. Uh, as far as Takeshita goes, though, he needs to join Chaos or and straight up become the leader. All right, he's perfect for Chaos. He he looks like he's a, he could be a good fit for United Empire, but he wouldn't be the the face of it. Uh, with Chaos, he would be the leader, like no doubt. Um, I guess he could be the leader of the United Empire. Uh, you know, for the you know the Japanese audience, and and he could speak on behalf of the rest of the United Empire. That would make sense too. So he comes to. Uh, United Empire, and he can become their leader. That's that's what I'm thinking. 
you know, and he can have that entire bridge between Takeshita and Osprey. They already have a working relationship, uh, both being a part of Don Callis's faction. Osprey recently left. However, we'll talk about United Empire uh, showing off their uh, video clip. Still shows Will Osprey within that faction. So he still he still likes to do the United Empire. Um, he still obviously presents himself like he's United Empire, but doesn't talk about it at all. As far as I've seen in AEW, uh, but maybe there could be a kind of re, you know, revival of that, um, and that would that would make sense too. But Takeshita, New Japan, leader of either Chaos or United Empire, either or works. We get fourth match. I don't know why it was it was presented as uh, this might have been an error, but it was a tag team. It was it was a um, ten man tag team tag team match. Okay, between guys like. Your president, Hiroshi Tanahashi, Toru Yanu, Ryusuke, Taguchi, missed him, Tiger Mask, Legendary, uh, Bolton Oleg versus all of the members of the House of Torture, Yoshinobu Kanemaru, Sho, Yujiro Takahashi, Ren Narita, and your boy, Evil. You know? Uh, as long as uh, he has a title. Uh, Hiroshi, Hiroshi Tanahashi is looking good on that top turnbuckle, showing off the gold. Okay? Uh... House of Torture, they start this matchup attacking Tanahashi first. They beat him down as a faction, uh, unified. And they and they, they they put their figurative cigarettes on the president of the New Japan Pro Wrestling Organization. Disgraceful. Disgraceful. So so great to see Taguchi, though, in action. He hits those ass attacks with authority. And then he goes on to deliver some B triggers. Not V triggers, B triggers. Rolling Bs. Atomic ash drops. No, just a nice plancha. Over the top rope. It was sick. It was good. Love Taguchi. I loved him in Super Junior. It's always fun to see him. Kanemaru and Tiger Mask. Uh, they, they, they go to town. Ta- like, Kanemaru essentially beating up on Tiger Mask. Tags to e- evil. Uh, Jiro Takahashi comes in with a chokehold on Tiger Mask. They're isolating Tiger Mask. Just beating him down like he owes them money. Uh, Narita gets tagged in. Puts more of a hurting on Tiger Mask. Until a Tiger Driver by Tiger Mask is delivered. Okay. By the living legend. Tag to Bolton Oleg. Oh, yeah. Big man comes in. Gut wrench on Narita. Tag to Yano, who exposes the corner. He gets a little crazy, as you know he can. Uh, almost gets a pin on Evil. Would have been would have been interesting to see that. Then, of course, you get a train run by the House of Torture on Yano in the corner. One attack after another running attack to the corner after another after another. You get the point. And then, of course, we get, can it be? No, please no. Dick to dick contact in Rio Goku. At one point, Taka, uh, Takahashi whoops out the pimp cane. He was about to hit somebody with the pimp cane. He misses it. Kanemaru comes in with a whiskey miss. Every single one of these guys is foreign objects. Is something like related to debauchery and uh, just depravity. Except for maybe uh, Narita's uh, push-up bar. It is metal plated though. Okay, I don't know. I don't know how you some freaky nature thing can be set like mixed into that object. Everything is evil on Yano for the win. Okay? After the whiskey misc hits the president. What was really cool, though, about the the, the finisher, I like this, and I noticed it. Um, when evil delivers the everything is evil, okay, the whole crowd just calmly said in unison, evil. And I, 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 I'm i sure that's not the first time it's ever been done, but it was very significant, like distinctive this time around. When I heard it, I thought it was cool. I'm marked out for that. Evil asked the LP as he was. Uh, so they continue the assault on everybody with chairs and object, all kinds of things. And out of nowhere, Shoto Umino comes in to help, you know, come in and help Kanemaru and, uh, sorry, not Kanemaru, um, Takahashi and uh, Taguchi and Yana. And Bolton and Tiger Mask. And they come in, stop them with chairs, right? ELP and Uno. Evil on the outside takes a good look at ELP and goes, Hey, can you trust them? Can you trust them? Smiling. And uh, yeah, ELP, he's like, I could trust them. Sure. What was up? And he was like, you know, shaking his head. Come talk to me. You know, I believe that was what was said. Something along the lines of come talk to me. And commentary team is furious because they know that he's taking advantage of the vulnerable ELP, which is what House of Torture tends to do. 
they 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 hearken to the to the vulnerable and attract them, bring them into the dark side. Join the dark side, ELP. It's time. Join the house of torture. It's not you didn't need to you know didn't pan out the book club doesn't mean you can't tap into your dark side with the house of torture. I think you'd be a great addition. I'm gonna tell you right now. So he's got that kind of low key monotone kind of chill vibe to him. Uh, he's definitely light because he's cool, but at the same time, he, he has a, you can tell he's got a dark side in there and pulling off all those moves that he does in a sort of house of torture fashion. I think that's right up his alley. He needs, he needs a little bit of a heel turn to season him up a little bit and then come back as, a, as even a better face. Fifth match, the just five guys, Takamichi Noku, Tai Chi, and Doki uh, versus Bullet Clubs, Taiji Ishimori, Clark Connors, and Drillo Maloney. So, Yu Yu Umura and Sonata are obviously taking a break, uh, especially Sonata, man. He's been knocked out of the playoffs. Ugh. Doki, Ishimori, they start this bad boy off. And they are going to battle for the junior heavyweight title at some point. They have not said it. Maybe now they have, but they didn't say it at the timing of this match. Most likely, I, if I have to guess, I'll, I would like to see it at Capital Collision. I could be wrong, but it's coming. We get a test of strength between... Tai Chi and Ishimori after Tai Chi's tagged in. You get a face lock by Takamichinoku. Bone lock, though, from Ishimori. Um, Takamichinoku's looking good during that face lock. You can see the guy is 50 plus, 50 years old, 50 plus years old, and he, and he works like he's got to be at least in his 30s. And you can tell he's not like on the gas or anything. He's not like, like doing anything like unnatural in terms of his body uh, development. Uh, he's just staying healthy. Uh, that's all there is. Um, and that's all I'm going to say about that. So good luck to him in the future. La Mystica and the Bone Lock and Ishimori. He, he makes him tap. Uh, Bullet Club, victorious. So Ishimori's a beast. Okay. He looks like he's like the ultimate beast. I cannot wait to see him take on Doki. He needs that run. He needs another run with the junior heavyweight title. I need to see it. Sixth match, Los Ingobernables de Japón. Bushi, Hiromu Takahashi, and the ungovernable one himself, Tetsuya Naito, versus United Empire, Francesco Akira, Great Okan, Hanari. Get a little, this is where we get the clip. I see, this is where I noticed that Osprey was still on the, uh, the you know, the theme song kind of, uh, tr you know, Titan Tron banner thing. I, I, I'm terrible with these types of terms. But yeah, uh, on the uh, image of the big screen, you see Osprey, and he's he's leading it like he's the leader still. Uh, where is the communication though between United Empire and Osprey? So I'd like to see more of that. Uh, United Empire though looking good against Naito, Lij, uh, Takahashi. He takes it to Akira. It's pretty cool. Hanari makes Bushi tap in the end. Hanari's beast. So if he gets a hold of you, Bushi. It's over. Meanwhile, Great Okan he applies that leg lock on Naito. He's not letting go. There is going to be a program between these two guys, Khan and Naito. Uh, after Khan defeated Naito after, after in that last uh, uh, round robin night and then go on to the playoffs, kept the IWGP champion out of the playoffs. So there's going to be a program between these two. And I look forward to it because their match was pretty hard hitting. It was fun to watch. And it's almost like scary and nerve wracking to watch because you think at some point Khan could take out Naito. I, I, I'm all for it. So here we go. Semi-final matches. The singles matches. It's going to be, huh. It's going to be, uh, some, some, some rough riding, right? It's going to, it's going to be a wild ride, each one. Okay. Let me put it to you like this. The third match, we talked about the first and the second matches being about nine minutes, 30 seconds, seven minutes, 40 seconds. The third match was eight minutes and 33 seconds. The fourth match was nine minutes and 37. The Bullet Club match versus the Just Five guys was eight minutes and two seconds. And then the, the sixth match, United Empire versus LIJ, nine minutes and seven seconds. Well, when we get to these matches, they're going 28, matches in 28 minutes and five seconds and 27 minutes and 38 seconds. No match throughout the entire G1 even came close to the length of these matches. And they had a 30-minute time limit. So... These two matches have no time limit, and they they dang near broke the 30-minute time limit. So that's kind of interesting how they were doing it this year. Maybe they need to, you know, step it up a notch. Maybe maybe they need to meet in the middle, 25-minute time limits, and that way we do get draws. We do get, uh, you know, matches that go to 24 minutes, 25 minutes, uh, or keep it at 30 minutes, and let's see some real bangers here. 
Um, the other thing is maybe divide them up into three groups. You know, we get 21 members, we get, or we get uh, 24 rather, and divide them up. I don't know, but uh, I do feel like they could have stretched out some of the matches um, throughout G1. Um, but these, these two matches did everything that needed to be done. These were incredible matches. Uh, so let's talk about the seventh match. David Finley versus Yoda Suji, semifinals, single matches uh, for the G1 Climax Tournament. Takeshita, he joins, the, he joins the audience. And then you get some screams, some shouts. People love Takeshita. And he just, he just walks right in. He doesn't need an entrance theme. He doesn't need any of that. He just walks right out. And all of a sudden, people are clapping. People are, are cheering him on. Takes a seat at the Japanese commentary table. <clears throat> Very fitting for this particular match. Yoda comes out, always a, a big smile on this guy's face, if you, if you already know. Uh, sinister, if you will, at some points. Menacing stare from David Finley as he comes out. Opposite side of the same coin, in my opinion, these guys. Uh, both of them are a part of this newer generation. Finley, he, uh, he's 31 years old, and he's, so he's, he's maybe a little bit farther away from, from Yoda's gen. But either way, he's fourth generation, born and bred to be in this business. Even before he was born, he was, he was already set to join this business. And meanwhile, Yoda is the type of guy who was an athlete in, in the football field and you know, colleg or collegiate. Um, and um, he, he made that transition to pro wrestling. That's just another path. And there's nothing wrong with that, but they're just very different, come from very different sides of the coin. So the bell sounds. They take. They just take in the atmosphere. Eventually, strikes ensue to the corner. The chops, the strikes, headbutts by Finley. Whips Yoda, who comes back with a shoulder tackle. Shove from Finley. Another strike from Yoda. Get a throat shot from Finley, but Yoda with a knee in control. Body scissors by Yoda. Rope break with the boot. Finley taking his time to get up, but a big shot from Yoda to the gut. Chop from Yoda. Shoulder blocks, a kick, whip, but Finley holds on. Another strike from Yoda. Finley drops Yoda on the corner and into that Russian leg sweep. Sweep, pin attempt. That's the first time we see Finley take a little bit of control. Then he uses the forearm to rake the face and a hard whip to the corner. Another pin attempt. Backbreaker from Finley and a pin attempt. Then into that camel clutch. he have been using it throughout the G1. Sure enough, it arrived in this match. Started off as about a, like a half camel clutch, and then it, it transitioned to a full camel clutch. A rope break, then some flexing by Finley. Stands on Yoda. Poses. Strikes exchange. Back breaker from Yoda. Tilt a whirl style. It was sweet. Suicide dive. Goes for it. Met right with a strike by Finley. Perfect timing. Then to the barricades goes Yoda. Then breaks out the tables, does Finley. Little FU for good measure. Yoda fights a power bomb into a table, but does get pushed into the barricade. Uh, barricade again. More posing from Finley. Feeling comfortable. He then he throws Yoda back in the ring and receives a super kick. Then the suicide die. Yoda breaks the count. Back in shots from Yoda. Nice hurricane. Hurricane Rana. Shoulder tackle from Yoda. Then the code breaker and a pin attempt. Roll up from Finley and a running elbow slides into the Yoda by Finley. Irish curse blocked. And turned into Yoda. Yoda's sequence with the backbreaker to the stomp. Sets up Finley on the curb. Sorry, on the top rope for, but pushed off. Still hits a kick to Finley. And then he pulls that head trap stomp. It's pretty cool. Another big kick. He misses the curb stop, though. Again, Finley able to lift Yoda and ram him into the corner. Post. Back in the ring. Irish curse. Penitent. Catches the knee from Yoda. Into a backbreaker by Finley. Another pin attempt. They hit the ropes and Yoda gets the running knee. Connects. Pin attempt. Yoda sets Finley on the top. And he's, he hits a Spanish fly. Very sweet. Got to remember this guy weighs about at least like what? 260, 270. He's a big dude. Okay. And he's making him. He's hitting the move that, you know, most average weight size guys wouldn't even attempt. Okay. Unless you're like a super junior or cruiserweight or a good, like a high flyer. This guy's not built like an AJ Styles or an Osprey. Okay, he's a big man. Falcon Arrow, another pin attempt. Then the stop. Marlowe crash avoided. And Finley tosses him to the corner and then hits that Dominator. Both are down for a moment. Sunset pin attempt by Yoda. 
Finlay up with the strikes. Almost power bombs Yoda to the outside. We get a back body drop to the apron by Yoda. Yoda for an Alabama slammer. Can't get him up. Shoves Finley to the post, then a super kick. And at that point, I'm just waiting for this. I'm waiting for those tables to get smashed. And Finley, he counters the Alabama slam to a power bomb right through the tables. Finley back in the ring. Yoda in at 19. Comes right into, obl- into oblivion. Only two. Finley, he's enraged. He starts hammering over Yoda with closed fists. The ref has to pull him off. More flicking off of the crowd. A powerbomb pin attempt from Finley. Buckle bomb connects. Another buckle bomb. Still only two. Another buckle bomb. And another buckle bomb. <laughs> More buckle bombs than I've ever seen ever in a, in, a, in, a, in a singles match. Yoda counters with a pin attempt. Then the Gene Blaster. Followed by a near powerbomb. Get stomped by Yoda. Marlowe Crash. He hits it, and it looks good. Still only two, though. Gene Blaster to a roll-up. Overkill. I Finley gets caught. He strikes, caught again. Headbutt, you feel it. Yoda's going to take this. Hits a dead bolt. And then the Gene Blaster for the one, two, three. And Yoda is going to the finals. This one went, like I said, 28 minutes and five seconds. They embr- You could see. They grabbing each other's hair just a little bit. Can't tell if they're going to attack each other or whatnot. You can tell they're having a if you're, you know if you if you know this enough experience with with rep pro wrestling you can tell they are got to be saying something along the lines of you know thank you for putting me over that was a hell of a match we did it thank you brother that's the type of stuff that's going on right that little moment okay because they put on a banger put on a hell of a, of a semifinal match and they should be very proud of what they did okay um, can't stress enough. So Finley, obviously, he's he's got plenty more in the works. He's got plenty lined up in the future. We're going to see all kinds of matches. He's got a lot of time. He's 31 years old. He's going to win this G1 sooner or later, especially after a match like that. This guy has put in a lot of work this year. And on that note, let's get to eighth match. Zack Sabre Jr. versus Shingo Takagi. Semi-final singles match. Ugh. This was this was a another banger. This one though was crazy. Um, that arm played into this match, and I like I knew it would. Sure enough, it did. I mean, Shingo Takagi versus Great Okan. Khan already put enough damage on it, so he had a target right on his arm. Bell sounds, and they are not about to rush the beginning of this match. They feel each other out. Saber takes the arm, and Takagi reverses. Saber rolls through, get a cravat by Saber. Takedown by Shingo. Cobra twist, senton missed. Things speed up, punt kick missed. Test of strength, gonna go to Shingo, but Saber rolls back to the reverse, to, uh, to reverse the lockup and into a Northern Lights. Gets a stomp in there. Saber back to the arm, joint manipulation, and another stomp on the arm. You knew after Shingo's last match, the arm, like I said, was gonna play a factor, and we get it right here. Uppercut forearms by Saber, snaps the arm over the shoulder. Shingo shoves Saber to the corner, backslide, then a twisted shout on Saber. Didn't expect that to come from Shingo. To the chin, chin lock by Shingo. Twisted out, corkscrew by Shingo. Put in some work, really making Saber work for this, making him making it seem like Saber is being a little bit outgunned here, a little outclassed, just kind of, you know, out of his element. Sends Saber to the outside. Good place for Shingo to be. Bad place for Saber. Whip Saber to the barricades. Attack continues on the outside. Ram Saber to the apron. Saber fights back a little bit until Shingo lifts Saber up and onto the apron. Over the rope and knee to the chest uh, of Saber by Shingo. Over hook and a takedown. Head scissors though by Saber. He finally transitions to something. Uh, he can't get it locked in though, so he worms his way to the the rope for break. Uh, literally worms his way. So it's kind of like bouncing up and down, uh, squiggling to the to the ropes. Saber can't make this up. Chops from Saber and a big strike from Shingo. Then the lariat in the corner, pick up and a drop into the elbow. Knee drop to Saber. Wasted. We get we get uh, waist locks countered. It gets real. It starts to get pretty fast. We're not sure what's going to happen next. Saber gets the neck twist followed by a quick drop kick. Love the angle at which he's able to just hit the drop kick. There are some wrestle, other wrestlers that can do this, but Saber's one of them. So I liked it. Strikes in a running European uppercut. Sick from Saber. 
backsplash in the corner, get a double overhook suplex into a bridge, only two. Finally, Shingo, Shingo back with strikes and his DDT spikes. Suplex pin attempt. And he calls for it. It's tea time. It's the Takagi time. The chance they start to erupt. Back suplex from Shingo. Shingo whips, whips, fall with the, the running, you know, the knee along the rope. Stays on top of Saber. Whip again. Saber counters with a schoolboy right into a devastating knee buster. Turns things around just like that. Kick Saber. Drops the knee on the left knee of Takagi. Saber almost a surfboard into stops. Takagi makes his way to the ropes even before Saber can get to him. Saber picks up. We get a pickup and a roll to the leg. Lock. But Shingo quickly rolls to the rope. Kicks from Saber. They start picking up the pace. Ends with a pumping bomber from Shingo. To the top rope. Suplex. And right into what Walker Stewart calls a pumping magic screw. Everything Shingo does is pumping, according to Walker Stewart. Do you know how wrong that sounds, Walker? Pumping magic screw. Anyways, made in Japan, avoided. Saber, almost able to bridge into a pin. But Takagi counters to a sleeper. Then into that Cobra. Foot to the rope for a rope break. But not a long break. Shingo hits a made in Japan. However, Shingo's knee is in jeopardy. Takagi goes for last of the dragon. Can't get him up. But does hit a lariat again. But no, can't do it. Can't get him up for that last of the dragon. Uppercut from Saber, pumping bomber, and the roll ups start to ensue until Saber catches Shingo with a Zack driver. Both are down for a bit as the crowd is uh, into is really into this one. Chanting both names, both guys, they're just into it. Uh, kicks from Saber after taking some tape off uh, some of his wrist tape. He wants that blood circulation, I guess, to you know roll through. Hits the twist and a punk kick near fall. Zack uh, driver attempt counter to the Cobra, counter to a leg lock. Takagi makes the ropes after a lot of load of torment. Shots from Shingo absorbed by Saber takes him down and a stop right on the arm. Shingo lifts Saber and a counter to the Cobra twist. But Shingo with a Death Valley and a pumping bomber. But the left knee still in torment. He's been taken apart, guys. Slowly but surely, he's been taken apart. It is, it is amazing to see how Saber just puts on a clinic and dissects his opponent. opponent. It's amazing. No cover, but Takagi lifts Saber, who tries a sleeper. Then into that guillotine triangle. Shingo lifts Saber to transition over his shoulders and last the dragon. That was impressive. Very impressive, to say the least. Uh, he hits last year's dragon, but it's only two. Larry with little gas. Another weak one by Shingo. Shingo can barely walk. Zach is st still strong, though, clearly. Big shot from Saber goes. Larry from Saber up at one driver. Only two. Hits the drag, Zach driver only two, but transitions right to the knee in the middle of the ring. I was like, oh, crap. Shingo fights. Even tells the ref not to call it. He grabs red shoes by the red shoe. Zach can barely stand. After what appears to be a tap out. That's right. Shingo finally taps out. At one point, Shingo Takagi, you know, this was such a great sell. Like, Zach looked like he, he was just stalking Shingo just a little bit. And Shingo just crawled to the rope to, to get a rope break, even before anything could be even been could even be applied on him. That's the, that's the type of selling that was going on in this match. He was being dissected. It was amazing. It was a lot of fun. It's a great match. Uh, both these guys are so impressive. They mesh really well together. Uh, Saber bows to Takagi. And... Yeah, 27 minutes, 38 seconds. Just a little bit shorter officially than, than the previous match, but just as hard-hitting. Uh, maybe even crazier. Both of these matches are top-notch, you know, 4.5 star, you know, borderline 5 star. Dave Meltzer, 6 star, right? No, it was, it was definitely up there. It was definitely at least, these are A matches. Though. These are both A matches. I'm not going to say A+, plus, but they're, they're excellent matches. Um, we'll, 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 we'll hold the A plus for tomorrow. Okay. We'll hold, we'll see what happens. Uh, and in, out comes, out goes Shingo. In comes Zach Sabre Jr.'s opponent for tomorrow, Yoda Suji. He's rocking that Panama hat. Like, perfect. I love it. I want that hat. I have a hat just like it. It's been damaged with all the, 
you know, as we traveled, the, the hat just gets smushed into the luggage. You can't do that. It's a beautiful hat. And so was Yoda's. I want it. He looks literally like he's the, you know, he, he literally matches the silhouette of the, the uh, LIJ logo. He looks cool with that hat. Uh, goes in, a little stare down to Zack Sabre Jr. Zack says, you know, he reaches out his arm, shake his hand. At one point, he says, he, he started to get pissed. This is some great selling because he made it look like, look, you better shake my damn hand. He says straight up, you better shake my, uh, you better uh, effing shake my hand. Uh, as if it was like, dude, I'm telling you right now, this is what you need to do. And you need to stop looking around at the crowd and you need to just shake my hand. Uh, but at the same time, this is Saber just selling, you know, the whole respect me persona. Well, we may never know, but who knows? Maybe something come up that there was a little, there was some there was some smoke between the two, some heat. Probably not. Okay, uh, Saber uh, gets the mic. He walks high up to the stands. You know where all his people are. He's look. He's, I mean, these sh- just excellent shots of Saber with the with the people. And all he says is, "See you tomorrow." That's it. See you tomorrow. That's all he needs to say because it's coming. And, and, you know, it's going to be a hell of a match tomorrow. It's going to be in Rio Goku. So I'm sure many of us, these people that were here tonight are going to be here tomorrow. Cannot wait. My God, it's a great time to be a wrestling fan. The summer is, it may very well, it has become my favorite time of wrestling. From WrestleMania all the way to Wrestle Kingdom. It's the best time to build up. I mean, wrestling year is, is excellent, but really things just uh, pick up after obviously the Royal Rumble. We, 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 we get really into it. And then uh, there's the lull before, you know, we get really get into SummerSlam. But SummerSlam to Wrestle Kingdom is awesome. We're going to get, um, we're going to get Survivor. We're going to get all in, in the ne- you know, n- next Saturday. And then we're, we're going to eventually, before you know, we'll be, we're obviously going to get Bash in Berlin. We're, before you know it, though, we're going to get bat. We're going to get Bad Blood and we're going to get into the Survivor Series, which is one of my personal favorites. Um, it, it's, it, it originally was my favorite pay-per-view of the big four. Uh, I also love the Royal Rumble, and they, but the Survivor Series was one of my favorites. We'll talk about that another time. But he does go to the back, does Jack Saber Jr. He says, and this was this was interesting. He's like, if I could beat, Sh-, he gives a lot of praise to Shingo Takagi, and he says, if I could, I told myself if I could beat Shingo Takagi, I could beat anybody. He craps all over the Three Musketeers. Said something about the Just Five guys. He is, he's got some heat in his character, right? He's definitely. Got some sour grapes towards the new generation because he's technically not the new gen. He's he admits he's he's he is proud to say he is the current gen and he's leading this whole transition to the next wave of of new Japan pro wrestling and he is okay, no doubt about it. He tells Suji, "Look, you've survived Finley and the Bullocks, right? All the all the crap that they do in the Bullet Club, but I'm a tournament wrestler and the last one to take off." The list is this best one. So, are you a tournament wrestler, essentially, to Zio Suji? You know, I'm the type of guy that can get, you know, keep on going, make my way to the end, and that's it. Got guys like Patrick Mahomes, who is a playoff player, okay? He knows what he's doing in the playoffs. He knows how to pace himself and win big-time games. Well, Zack Sabre Jr. is claiming the same thing. He's saying, I'm, he, tells, he tells everybody to get that trophy all shiny. He says, everyone is talking about who isn't here and forgot who is. He's making remarks to guys like Will Ospreay, Okada. I mean, they have every right to show some of this angst because people on the internet and social media and journalists and blogs have been talking about New Japan like they are on their way to uh, to the cemetery. This is This is not happening. This was never the case. Okay, they may have had drops here and there, but their promotion, their 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 roster is still excellent. And people say things like, "Oh well, you know, we don't need anybody else from 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 New Japan." That's because you're getting a lot of the same guys who aren't also also New Japan's not willing to give up anybody yet. Okay, very soon you're going to see some guys that you're going to want to pay attention to because they make little glimpses and you know onto your media streams and your uh, realm of attention span. That's what's going to happen. And then again, you're going to be calling for, oh, okay, we want these guys to be in AEW. We want these guys to come to WWE. It's always the same. Uh, but Sabre, he was, 
he was adamant. He said, you forgot who is me. It's the year. It's not the year of the dragon. It's the year of the effing saber. Okay. He's pissed. He's going to lead new Japan guys like him, guys like Yoda Suji, guys like David Finley, plenty, plenty. I can go on and on and on. But on that note, we are done for the day. It has been a, a great, you know, time watching the semifinals and of course the rest of the G1 Climax 34. Guys, hit that like and subscribe button. I will see you all tomorrow. You enjoy the rest of your weekend. I'm going to definitely hit up a wine fest. Enjoy some nice wine. with my beautiful wine. And we're going to have some fun. So take care. Y'all have a good night. See you tomorrow.